No beginning, no middle, just an end. It just ends. It ends, I end. It does not begin, it never begins, it cannot begin. It isn't a thing. We used to think it was. We were all so convinced it was. I was convinced it was. I know now. That's what makes me different, not better. We are all so small, so insignificant, disgusting. I just know it. That's it. I know what you don't, what they don't. I know what no one else knows. I know that life, yours, mine, everyone's, is little more than dust. <laughs> It means nothing. We are born, we live, we die. For what? I'll tell you for what. Nothing. There is no reason for anything in this life. It doesn't matter. We are all born with our mothers straddling the grave. We are all born just to die. You cannot stop that. You can try. We all try. Not me, but we all try. Like you. You're trying right now. Look at you. You're here on the floor, crying, doing everything you can to avoid it. Everyone dies. So why are you so upset? Because you're embracing the inevitable? Everyone has to die. You're just going a little early. And if I was you, I'd stop coming to terms with that. Because in 10 minutes, you start that journey. When I was a young man, about, oh, 10 years ago or so, I was a gambler. I don't just mean I gambled. It was all I ever did. I was less of a person than I am even now. I was a gambler. I slept, I ate, I drank, I fucked at that casino. If I wasn't at the table, I was buying more chips. And if I wasn't buying chips, I was at the table. You understand? I don't think you heard me. I asked, do you understand? Do you understand? <laughs> Yes. Yes, sir. I understand. Thank you. I'm only trying to help. Now, back you go. Ah! I was a gambler, yes. I wasn't good, though. I lost a little and then a lot. And by that time, I'd racked up enough debt to sideline a fair-sized business. One day, I was at this poker table in some casino I had just heard about. By then, I started dashing from casinos whenever I couldn't pay up, finding some way to move around without the higher-ups catching wind of me. I was at this table full of rich, bourgeois little shits when I thought things were about to turn around for me. I had put up $15,000 that I did not have 
and held a straight flush. <laughs> they all folded, but I was matched by one of them. The one opposite me. A small, hook-nosed, pup-bellied, pretentious fuck. He looked like money. He smelled like money. I bet he would have tasted like money. I showed my hand. Straight flush. He showed his. Royal flush. I'm no expert card counter, but listen to me. There is no way he could have won. The only way he could have had all those cards is by cheating. He must have cheated. He cheated. He cheated! He cheated! I left that table, the fat bastard laughing at me. I went into the washroom to figure out how I was going to skip this new debt. When I looked at myself in the mirror, I saw the desperation. I saw the hopelessness. I saw the defeat. Then I saw nothing. I saw nothing at all. I saw nothing in the mirror because I realized it all. If money can come and go that quickly, then is it really important? The clothes I wore. One day they'll wear through. My hair will fall out. My teeth will rot. My bones will break. My mind will unwind. <laughs> Standing in front of that mirror, I realize that death was, is, the only real thing. We are born, but we don't live. We just wait to die. And nobody likes waiting. So, do you see now why I'm doing this? You're lucky enough to skip all the waiting, all the bullshit, and just die. I'm helping you. That's what I do. I help people die. Look at me. Each mark on my body is another person helped. Look here, just underneath my ribcage. See that? I helped those five just last week. And here? Here is a family I helped last year. All those people helped. 74 after you. Am I not a good person? Am I not a saint? Am I not an angel? <laughs> Don't worry about thanking me. No one ever does. <laughs> behind you. The chair. He's gone. And my job is complete. You were late again, just like last time. Quiet. <coughs> Hurting me won't bring them back. No. <laughs> no, don't worry. You're safe for today. I just need to do some bookkeeping. There. All done. 74. <laughs> That's 74 people you failed. I said shut up! I'm only doing what's right. Look at us. We're no different from one another. No different in any way. I can think of a few ways. 
What? Because you don't kill people? Because you're a hero? Because you just break their bones, condemning them to a life in a wheelchair? You've brought so much pain to so many people. At least I spare them that. You're a freak, Zaz. A freak? Oh, I don't think so. I help people. I help them escape the nothingness. And I do it randomly. I don't discriminate. Look at him over there. I saw him today. He was the first person I saw. I didn't choose him. He chose himself. You, though. You choose. You choose. You decide who's worthy of punishment, who deserves to never walk again, who deserves to never see or hear or speak again. I help strangers to transition to the other side, a new commit, predetermined, planned out acts of violence. So maybe there are a few ways we're different after all. You're the freak. Looks like a few of your friends are joining us. Before they climb those stairs, I want you to know this. One day, maybe soon, maybe a year from now, 10, 20, whenever, you'll realize I was right. The life is meaningless. The death is the only constant, the only reality. I just hope you come and find me then. GCPD! Open up! My god... What happened here? How nice of you to join, even if you are a little late. Victor Zaz happened. He's all yours. What? Just like that? You ain't gonna help or nothing? I hope to see you soon, brother. Hello everyone, Geek for Fun back again with another behind the scenes Echoes of the Night um, interview segment with the cast and crew. This time we're going to be talking with the writer of this episode, Demons. Uh, kind of an introspective, smaller scope, personal type of episode we had today, folks. And with that, I figured the only way we can kind of get beneath the scars of uh, Zaz himself is to talk to the one, the only, TJ. Hello. <laughs> There's just, I have to give you a build off intro and you respond with, yeah. hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most hop I've got in, in years, but yeah. No. Um, <laughs> Let's get into it. Awesome. <laughs> um, just before we go too deep into the episode proper, I want to ask you the question I've asked everyone um, of the cast and crew so far. Right. What about Batman as a character drew you to him? Have you been a fan prior? And what made you want to join a project like this? Oh, well, uh, Batman as a character is someone I've... The character I've followed for years. He's probably the first superhero I was ever really interested in. If At home, if I look behind me right now, I've got a massive mural of Batman in there. That's been there for years. He's really been the only character that I've really invested that much time into. I've collected countless editions of comics to do with him, all the films, all the animated films by DC, whether they're great or not. Um, but yeah, no, Batman is just someone I, I think he's kind of easy for everyone to connect to because it's such a, a, a rich character. Some of the other characters you have in any comic series, are, they can be quite flat and one-dimensional, but Batman really, the whatever angle you take from it, you can always pull back the... I mean, like, there's just so much to get into with him, no matter how you look at it. Mm -hmm, definitely. And did you find taking that um, experience as being such a fan, was that any different to approaching that as a writer? Yeah, no, it, it's uh, two completely different worlds because you've got to kind of be a lot more uh, objective when you're a writer. You don't want to kind of fall into the pitfalls of being a fanboy or being someone in a comic space where you kind of glorify the characters it, it, it maybe that's not the right word but 
you have to kind of distance yourself from the character so you can get an objective point of view when you're writing. You don't want your stories to be one dimensional and you don't want to get sucked into the, as I said, the pitfalls of just like um, wish fulfillment when you're writing a character. You've got to really kind of disregard your interest in the character to fully get yourself in the, in the mindset to write something good. Mm-hmm. Like you want to, you want to stop looking at them as icons or people to look up to and you actually want to separate them to people and find their flaws, find the, the damage in Bruce Wayne to be able to actually exactly. tell a story about him. Exactly, yeah. You don't want to just end up writing another generic Batman story that like some six-year-old could tell you. You want to look for something original in the character because the character is decades and decades old. There's been so much said about it. There's so many stories he's been involved in. But you want to be able to find something that is personal to you that you can connect to the story with as well. You don't want to just write about something in general terms. You really want to deep dive and look at things under a microscope. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes to your choice of villain for this episode. Uh, Victor Saz yeah. is kind of, he's been made appearances in like video games and animated series. But very rarely do you see him as the, the standalone character. Normally he's like a goon. What drew you to using him as the focus of this episode? It was, it was mostly just someone I didn't really know a lot about it when I started it. I thought, as I said, if I allowed myself to write about something which I didn't know too much about, something that I didn't have to rely on my knowledge already, I felt like I could do something more interesting, which I think I, hopefully I achieved with this episode. I didn't know much about Zaz, so I researched him, I read about him, I watched videos about him, I watched his appearances in different forms of media. And that allowed me to really come up with a, a cool idea for this character. One that is, is based on things I've seen before, but one that makes sense in the world we're trying to create. And yeah, it's it just uh, the perfect match for me with me and Zaz as the villain for this episode, because I didn't know a lot about him. Mm-hmm. And that doing that research has helped me to learn more about the law of Batman itself, but also to become a better writer in this space. Which is a lot of what we're aiming to do here is um, a lot of people's first time, not necessarily writing, but definitely writing for specifically audio um, in this Batman universe can be quite daunting as a challenge. So I do think there are often sometimes the uh, the safety nets of the characters you're more familiar with, the, the characters you can know inside and out, being able to stretch your wings a little bit and go for these more obscure characters. I think it's something that's very admirable, and uh, I think you did a great job. Given all of that, though, um, how did you find writing for audio then in in this specific format? Uh, writing writing for audio, it's his own kettle of fish. I've I've tackled audio before in my uh, life at university, in my first year at university. That that was two three years ago now. So to get back into it now is really Difficult isn't isn't the word isn't the right word, but it, it's a completely different minefield to writing for TV, writing for film, writing for the stage, writing uh, novella, novel fiction, writing poetry. It's all it's all a different thing in its own. So, writing for audio, you've really got to hone your dialogue skills. I think you've really got to have your your dialogue skills up to scratch so everything seems realistic because that is your main tool in creating a universe. You can't rely on quick flashes of characters, which you can do on visual media. You can't rely on uh, special effects or lighting like you would do on the stage. You've got to really get down to the nitty gritty and think about everything that's going to be played on that channel. Everything that's going to be heard by your audience, because that is what's going to be used to build the world. And you can't miss out any small detail, because if you do, then there's a flaw in the scene, and there's a, if there's a flaw in the scene, it's not believable. If it's not believable, it sucks. Mm-hmm. It, it, you, you can't use any of the cheat codes. All your, no! Yeah. All your illusions and kind of tricks of the camera, or even if you're using this to compare to Batman's source material, with a comic book, you can't have the great splash pale reveal, reveal of Zaz looking terrifying with gorgeous artwork. You have to get that across through simply how you write the character. Yeah. No, so it's challenging, but it's very rewarding at the same time. If you can, it, audio is like, in some ways, it's almost the ultimate challenge for the writer. If you can nail audio, then you've 
you're going to be successful in anything else because writing for audio dramas and writing for radio, whatever you want to call it, it, it's like the most bare bones kit you can get. It's like playing a game of the hardest difficulty. It's like taking SAS training for writers. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You, there's, you haven't got anything to help you. With. You've only got what you've got on the page. You know, it's not like a script that you're then developing into something that takes the form of a visual media or something that's going to be taken into a physical space, like on a stage. You've only got this audio and the lines you've written, and that's it. You know, it's you, you, everything's got to be up to scratch, otherwise, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And speaking of improving as time goes on, given in this kind of universe we're building with Echoes, um, we've got a Batman who's very young in his career. Um, he's in like just past his first year, barely, um, and he's making a lot of mistakes, as evidenced in this script. Do you think that's something you would like to explore more with the character as we continue to grow and have him? learn from episodes in these scripts or are you interested in other angles like where would you like to to take our version of this universe going forward oh i really think the character of batman works perfectly with the darker atmosphere we're going with that is something i'm definitely more interested in working with than maybe not the more more traditional but like i don't want to glorify anything that we see i want everything to be just straight facts, straight truth, straight honesty. I don't want, I don't want the dirty deeds to be to look heroic. I don't want the dirty work that these heroes do to be glorified and look like they're a supreme act of humanitarianism. Uh, I want if someone gets punched in the face, they get punched in the face. You know, like we can't we can't forget if there's a fight that Batman has with his five goons or whatever, five mafia goons, and he takes all of them out. If he breaks somebody's leg in that fight, he dramatically changes their life completely. He, he could be putting people in wheelchairs on a daily basis. So something like, something like that, like some small detail that you'd see in uh, maybe one of the Nolan films or one of the animated series is something I think we should really look at more in our attempt at looking at this world. Because I think it's, it's an angle not many people take because it certainly is a darker and more gruesome and less heroic um, portrayal of the character and I think that's what to be successful you've got to be original I think that's really going to work in our favour going forward mm-hmm. and I think as well even moving away from that it's also honest and sometimes that can be even more brighter and inspiring like there, there's a flip side to that as by being true with the character and, and making it um, even the most supernatural and out there things grounding them in that state of flesh and blood you, you get to have a more inspiring message that can apply to us as we are now, whereas sometimes something that says it's hopeful but doesn't actually show anything that can be applicable in our world does more damage than something that may at first seem more dark and gruesome but is really trying to appeal to the reality of like the human spirit. And I think, I think that's a great angle to take this. Given all of that, TJ, where can people find you? Well, I, I don't have that much of an online presence, but my Twitter handle is at Taylor Stevens zero zero is in the number rather than it's uh, written out form. Uh, I work in film. I write, I direct, I do everything on a set, really. So I'll be uploading examples of my work there. Uh, going forward, I want to try and pursue this kind of work as a career. So any sort of, sort of interaction and feedback I can get on any of these projects I produce is invaluable to me. It really is going to be my key to success. If I know what I can do better, and if I know what people like, then I can put the two together and create something brilliant. Mm -hmm, Definitely. So Taylor's uh, link will be in the description. And if you want to follow him there, you can probably interact with him and tell him everything you liked about this episode or everything you didn't like about this episode. Uh, as well yes, as feel the... free to. <laughs> uh, as well as in the comments of this episode. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Uh, this has been a pleasure. And everyone else who's enjoyed listening to this, thank you so much for staying till the end. Uh, we'll have another episode of this and the series next week. Until then, always have fun, geeks.